Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm just going to give folks a minute or two to trickle in. Hey. Hi, everybody. My name is Abby Borchers. I'm a policy analyst with Denver's Department of Excise and Licenses, and we're here today to talk about marijuana hospitality in Denver. Um, I'll let my colleagues on the call introduce themselves as well. Joey, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, thank you, Abby. My name is Joey Pena. I am a cannabis process navigator for the Department of Excise and Licenses. Thanks, Joey. Hi, everybody. Molly Duplashane, uh, Policy Director for the Department of Excise and Licenses. Thanks for being here. All right, looks like we have a good number of people um, in the room, and it seems to be holding steady. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, again, this is a session about marijuana hospitality in Denver. Um, and these slides and a recording of this session will be available on our website. Uh, after the webinar is over. So I wanna start with a timeline of marijuana hospitality in Denver and kind of how we got to where we are now. Um, so in May, 2019, the state legislature passed Bill 191230, allowing for marijuana consumption marijuana hospitality businesses. Oops, sorry about that. Um, and then the state licensing authority adopted rules um, implementing that legislation and um, creating a little more guidelines for hospitality businesses. Then in June of 2020, the state legislature passed House Bill 2014-24, creating criteria to qualify as a marijuana social equity licensee. In April 2021, Denver City Council passed Council Bill 21-0217, um, which adopted a marijuana hospitality program and also provided that only social equity applicants are eligible for marijuana hospitality licenses in Denver until July 1st of 2027. In November of 2021, so about a month ago, Denver made applications available for marijuana hospitality business licenses. Um, that was part of the launch of our online licensing system for uh, most of our marijuana business licenses. Um, as I said, only social equity applicants are eligible to apply for marijuana hospitality licenses until July 1st of 2027. Um, you can visit our social equity website to learn more about the, the entire social equity program, as well as what it takes to qualify as a social equity applicant. Um, just to go through the criteria, uh, if you're not familiar, um, you have to be a Colorado resident to qualify as a social equity applicant. Um, you have to be a Colorado resident at the time of application, um, and there's no specific amount of time that you've had to be a Colorado resident. You can never have had a marijuana license revoked by the state licensing authority or by uh, Denver Excise and Licenses. And then you have to qualify under one of three criteria. Um, the first criteria is that the applicant resided in an opportunity zone or a disproportionate impacted area for at least 15 years between 1980 and 2010. Um, the state has some information on their social equity website about how to determine whether you lived in an opportunity zone or a disproportionate impacted area. The second criteria is that the applicant or their immediate family member was arrested, convicted, or suffered a civil asset forfeiture due to a marijuana offense. And the third criteria is that the applicant's household income did not exceed 50% of the state median income, and that's measured by the number of people who reside in the applicant's household. Finally, a social equity applicant must own at least 51% of the marijuana business license being granted. And in Denver, any license granted to a social equity applicant 
has to be majority owned by a social equity applicant until July 1st, 2027. So that license could be transferred to another social equity applicant who holds 51% or more of the license, um, but has to remain 51% owned by a social equity applicant. Um, and we have additional resources on our website, our social equity website, um, that go into more detail about the social equity in general. Um, so if you're curious and you want to sort of backtrack and learn more about that to start, um, definitely check out our Denver's social equity website. So let's dive into some of the basics of hospitality businesses. There are three license types. Um, the first is a marijuana hospitality business, and it can be a little confusing because that term can be used more broadly to describe all these license types, but uh, for our purposes, the marijuana hospitality business license is sort of the base license. It's um, the one that allows for consumption of marijuana by adult patrons, so people 21 and older, within a permanent licensed premises. Um, no sales of marijuana are permitted, and patrons are allowed to bring their own marijuana to consume. So this is really the bring your own model. Um, the other type of hospitality license is a marijuana hospitality business with a mobile premises. So again, this allows for people 21 and older to consume marijuana on a mobile licensed premises. Um, a mobile premises has to be a vehicle, so um, a shuttle or a bus. And then no sales of marijuana are, are permitted, but uh, consumers can bring their own marijuana to consume. And then the third type of hospitality license is a marijuana hospitality and sales business license. This allows for consumption of marijuana that's purchased on site by people 21 and older. Um, this is on a permanent licensed premises. These cannot be mobile um, and limited sales of marijuana are permitted and patrons are not allowed to bring their own marijuana. Some more basics about uh, all of these types of hospitality licenses. Um, any person has to be 21 or older to enter any type of hospitality business. There are no exceptions for medical marijuana registry card holders under the age of 21. Hospitality businesses can operate from 7 a.m. until 2 a.m. And indoor smoking and vaping are allowed at all types of hospitality businesses, um, but that has to be done in compliance with an odor control plan that's been submitted to the Department of Public Health and Environment and approved by them. Um, consumption of edible marijuana products is also allowed. And patrons cannot smoke tobacco or consume alcohol on the premises. And the licensee is responsible for ensuring that alcohol and tobacco consumption does not occur on the premises. Like any business, a hospitality business must have general liability insurance. All owners and employees of a hospitality business are required to complete a responsible vendor training course annually. Um, and the state provides a list of state approved responsible vendor training providers on their website. There are also requirements for uh, how the hospitality business licensee um, needs to regulate conduct on the licensed premises. The business cannot allow disorderly conduct, rowdiness, undue noise, or other disturbances that are offensive to the neighborhood. The business cannot allow any person showing visible signs of intoxication to consume marijuana. Um, and those responsible vendor training courses are required to provide some training on how to recognize signs of intoxication. Um, no marijuana consumption is allowed by on-duty employees of the business. And the business is required to report criminal activity that requires an in-person response from law enforcement to the State Marijuana Enforcement Division within 48 hours. Um, so there's a number of things to know about uh, what a hospitality business's premises can look like. Um, the licensed premises of a hospitality business is not allowed to overlap with the licensed premises of a medical or retail marijuana store. It also cannot overlap with the licensed premises of a liquor licensed business. Um, so what does overlapping mean? Um, basically, this means that the two licensed premises have to have a separate address 
separate, separate entrances and exits, and no door or hallway through which a consumer can pass. And then if there are windows on shared walls, they have to be covered or rendered opaque so that you can't see um, into the licensed premises of the marijuana business. Display and consumption of marijuana cannot be visible from outside the licensed premises. And hospitality businesses are allowed to have outdoor consumption areas, so um, like an outdoor patio. Um, but the outdoor consumption area must be surrounded by a side obscuring wall, fence, hedge, or some other opaque or translucent barrier. Um, the business must ensure that all marijuana is kept out of plain sight and is not visible from a public place. Uh, outdoor consumption areas are required to comply with all applicable zoning, right of way, and other city requirements. And then those outdoor consumption areas are required to have an approved odor control plan and comply with that odor control plan. Um, if you choose to operate a hospitality business or a hospitality and sales business uh, in a retail food establishment, um, there cannot be any overlap with a liquor licensed premises. You have to have a separate address, separate entrances and exits, and no door or hallway through which a consumer can pass, all the things that we just talked about with overlapping premises. Um, a hospitality licensed premises can operate in or must operate in, in an isolated area of the retail food establishment. Um, and that has to be separated by a site obscuring barrier and a secure door. And only customers 21 or older can enter the hospitality licensed premises. If you have a retail food establishment that allows people under the age of 21 into the establishment, so like a restaurant um, where people under 21 could come in and, and purchase and eat food, the hospitality licensed premises has to be sort of like a private room where only people 21 or older could be allowed into the hospitality licensed premises. Um, employees of the retail food establishment can serve food in the hospitality licensed premises. Um, if they have unescorted access to the hospitality licensed premises, they do have to have a marijuana enforcement division employee license. And then the hospitality business is not allowed to add marijuana to food served by the retail food establishment. So while you could potentially serve a, um, a pre-manufactured uh, marijuana infused drink um, with the food that's being served. You couldn't add marijuana to the food being served or to any of the drinks being made on the premises because that would require a, a manufacturing license. Um, if you are not operating in a retail food establishment, but you still wish to serve um, food or drinks, uh, you are allowed to serve hot coffee, hot tea, instant hot beverages, and non-potentially hazardous donuts or pastries obtained from sources that are compliant with food laws. Um, you can also serve non-potentially hazardous commercially prepared prepackaged food that requires no preparation other than heating the food within its original container. Okay, so those were requirements that sort of applied to all types of marijuana hospitality businesses. Now I wanna talk a little bit more specifically about the requirements that apply to each uh, type of hospitality license. So as I said before, the marijuana hospitality business is the bring your own marijuana model. Marijuana sales are not permitted. Um, patrons can bring their own marijuana to consume. Uh, you cannot give away free samples of marijuana. Um, giving away free marijuana is, is generally prohibited across all license types. Um, the mobile house or the marijuana hospitality business operates out of a permanent fixed license premises. Um, there are no allowances for temporary or special event permits. And then marijuana storage is not permitted on the premises, um, except for marijuana that's left by consumers. And that is required to be secured in an area that's inaccessible to patrons of the business. And then it's required to be destroyed in compliance with state rules for uh, wasting marijuana. The marijuana hospitality business uh, may have an underlying business as well. So it could be something like um, a yoga studio or a bowling alley or an art gallery or some business um, where activities are happening that, that people might 
go to for entertainment, but then they can also consume marijuana on the premises and bring their own marijuana with them to consume. So the second type that we talked about is the marijuana hospitality business with a mobile premises. So what is a mobile premises? Um, the state defines mobile premises as a licensed premises operated by a marijuana hospitality business in a motor vehicle, which includes any self-propelled vehicle that is designed primarily for travel on the public highways and is generally and commonly used to transport people and property over the public highways for a low speed electric vehicle. But this definition does not include electric assisted bicycles, electric scooters, low power scooters, wheelchairs or vehicles moved solely by human power. So for example, um, a mobile premises could be a shuttle bus or a tour bus, um, but something like a pedal cab could not be a mobile hospitality premises because a pedal cab is, is propelled by human power. Um, there's also a number of requirements for the mobile premises. Uh, the vehicle has to be registered in Colorado and insured. It has to have a permit issued by the State Public Utilities Commission. Um, it has to have GPS tracking, as well as video surveillance covering the entry and exit points in the driver's area. It is required to have ventilation that prevents air from the consumption area of the vehicle from circulating into the driver's area of the vehicle for the driver's safety. No marijuana consumption or possession is allowed in the driver's area, again, for the driver's safety. Um, the vehicle is not allowed to have external markings, words, or symbols that constitute advertising as defined by Denver's Marijuana Code, and that's a Denver requirement. Um, so the definition of advertising in Denver's code is the act of drawing the public's attention to a medical or retail marijuana business in order to promote the sale of cannabis by a medical or retail marijuana business or consumption of marijuana in a marijuana business. Um, consumption activity must not be vis visible from outside the vehicle. So um, you may need to consider things like um, blacking out the windows or, or using coverings that prevent uh, consumption from being visible. Um, there's also a number of operating requirements for mobile hospitality businesses. A uh, mobile hospitality business is required to designate a separate fixed place of business. Um, it does not have to be a marijuana licensed premises, but if you would be transporting marijuana there for destruction, so if people are leaving marijuana on the tour bus and you need to transport it somewhere to, to destroy it, uh, that premises would have to be a marijuana licensed premises. Um, it can be a licensed marijuana hospitality business as long as the two businesses are identically owned. So the mobile hospitality business could designate a fixed hospitality business as long as the two have identical ownership. Um, so you could park the mobile hospitality bus at the hospitality business. Um, Mobile hospitality businesses are required to file route logs with Denver's Department of Excise and Licenses, um, and those have to be filed at least seven business days before the scheduled departure. The route log has to identify the origin, destination, and all stops in between. So the origin is the place where you're picking people up, the destination is the place where you're dropping them off, and then if you're making any stops in between, you'll need to list the address of those stops. Um, you're not allowed to change or deviate from the route without notifying the department at least seven business days in advance. So we'll have a form on our website for you to fill out as a route log. Um, and you can fill out that route log for multiple vehicles if, those, if all those vehicles will be using those routes um, and just provide that to us at least seven days before your first scheduled departure. You don't need to provide a route log to us every seven days before a departure. It's just the first seven days before your first scheduled departure. If you decide to change any of those routes or add a new route, you'll just need to uh, upload a new route log form to our online licensing system. Um, stops cannot include schools, child care establishments, alcohol or drug treatment facilities, or city-owned recreation centers or pools. Um, 
and the root doesn't have to, when I say root, it doesn't have to be the exact streets you're going to take or the exact um, route you're taking through the city. All that we're interested in is the origin, the destination, and any stops you're making in between. Um, stationary consumption is prohibited. So that means that no consumption of marijuana is allowed on the mobile premises if the vehicle is stopped, standing, or parked for more than 30 minutes. So by way of example, you couldn't um, park the mobile premises outside of, say, a concert venue, and then allow concert goers to sort of come and go from the venue and get on your bus and smoke and get off or and get back on. Um, it's really meant to be what it's called, which is a mobile premises. Um, mobile hospitality businesses are also only allowed to operate in those local jurisdictions that allow for mobile marijuana hospitality businesses. Um, so currently you could really only operate in Denver, but say, you know, hypothetically, if, if another jurisdiction nearby, if Inglewood opted into marijuana, mobile marijuana hospitality, you could move between Denver and Inglewood as long as you had a license in both jurisdictions. Okay, um, the third and final type of hospitality license is the retail marijuana hospitality and sales business license. Um, again, this is a license that is at a fixed licensed premises, so a permanent premises. It's not allowed to be mobile. Um, limited sales are allowed, but no bring your own marijuana is allowed at this uh, business license type. Um, retail marijuana sales only are allowed. There's no medical marijuana sales at this license type. And the sales limits are two grams of flour, one half gram of concentrate, products containing 20 milligrams of THC broken into 10 milligram THC servings. And then those sales limits are per customer per business day. So you couldn't uh, sell somebody two grams of flour in one transaction. Um, they go and finish it and then they come back and get more. Uh, you could only sell them two grams of flour in one business day. You can only sell them one half gram of concentrate or 20 milligrams of THC in a product uh, per business day. Um, you are allowed to transfer marijuana to a customer without packaging and labeling, but it must meet minimum requirements in the Marijuana Enforcement Division's Rule 3.10.20b. Um, so at a, at a minimum, you have to provide a written statement of the potency of active THC and CBD at the time of transfer and then make any other labeling information that would normally be on the product available upon request. Uh, you cannot sell marijuana to a consumer if the employee knows or reasonably should know that they do not intend to consume the marijuana on the premises. A consumer can leave with unconsumed marijuana as long as the unconsumed marijuana has been packaged and labeled in accordance with MED Rule 31020C. All right, let's talk a little bit about Denver's licensing process. Um, as a reminder, Colorado has a dual licensing system. So you would need a license from the state licensing authority, as well as a license from Denver's Department of Excise and Licenses. So, um, just as a reminder, the state issues state marijuana business licenses. They issue employee and owner licenses. So those individual licenses that are tied to your person and not, not necessarily to your business. Um, they also regulate matters of statewide concern, such as packaging, labeling, testing, production management, et cetera. Um, Denver's Department of Excise and Licenses issues the corresponding local marijuana business license we also regulate time, place, and manner of marijuana businesses and matters of local concern, such as location requirements, public hearings, um, advertising restrictions, things like that. Okay, um, this is a sort of high level step-by-step -step process for applying for a marijuana hospitality business license. Um, we also have a very detailed step-by-step -step guide to applying for any marijuana business license on our website. 
So the first step is to apply to the state licensing authority um, for a finding of suitability and designation as a social equity applicant. This is the step where you're applying for your owner license and they do a background check on you, um, a financial investigation. They uh, determine whether you're eligible as a social equity applicant as well, which you'll have to be in order to apply for a license in Denver. Um, once you have that finding of suitability approved, you can apply for a state marijuana business license. Um, you must submit that state business license application first and obtain a state business license number. Um, you don't have to have that state license approved yet. You just have to have applied for it. You can submit a city application immediately after you apply to the state. If you'd like to, you will just have to provide that valid state license number to submit a city application. The next step is to apply online with Denver. Um, to apply for a marijuana hospitality business license with Denver, you will have to use our online permitting and licensing center. And we have, like I said, more step-by-step -step instructions as well as training videos um, available on our website. And then you'll be required to pay uh, any required fees to Denver. Um, the next step is the Department of Excise and Licenses will review the application and all required documents. That process can take 20 days or longer. Um, the application could be denied at this stage if causes for denial exist. Um, so if the proposed location is within a thousand feet of prohibited uses, um, or if you are found to not be eligible as a social equity applicant, um, if any of those causes for denial exist, it could be denied at that stage. If there are mistakes in the application or deficiencies, you'll be notified to correct them within seven days. After your city application review is complete and the application is deemed eligible to move forward, uh, a public needs and desires hearing will be scheduled within 30 to 60 days. The needs and desires hearing is required for hospitality business licenses, uh, marijuana stores, um, certain types of liquor licenses, and it's a hearing that is meant to assess the need and the desire of the adult, adult inhabitants of the neighborhood around your proposed location um, to see if they need or desire that type of license in their neighborhood. Um, it's important that you review the department's hearing policies and procedures, and there's a link in the slides which will be available online after this presentation. Um, after the hearing takes place, the hearing officer who oversees the hearing will make a recommended decision to the Director of Excise and Licenses. Um, and just note that there is no hearing requirement for a mobile hospitality business, uh, primarily because it's, it's mobile and it doesn't have a, a neighborhood surrounding it. Um, if the application is recommended for approval by the Director of Excise and Licenses, you will receive an inspection notice to complete your required inspections. Um, inspections include zoning and neighborhood inspections, building, fire, public health, and excise and licenses. Um, at least for those brick and mortar, the hospitality business or the retail marijuana hospitality and sales, um, mobile hospitality would have more limited inspections. Uh, once you have passed all the required inspections and obtained state approval of your state business license, you'll just send an email to exlapplications at denvergov.org with your business file number, so the number that we assign to your application, uh, your state license, and then a request to issue your city license. Um, once all that is complete, you'll receive an email with your certificate of licensure, and then you can open for business. So let's talk about some of the uh, elements of a hospitality business application. Um, there's quite a few that they all have in common. Um, for all of them, you would have to submit uh, proof of your social equity applicant eligibility. So that includes your letter from the state licensing authority that uh, you've been found suitable and that you qualify as a social equity applicant. And then on top of that, you'll be required to submit any documentation that you submitted to them for your uh, social equity or for your finding of suitability as a social equity applicant, um, you'll be required to submit that same documentation to us for review. Um, you're required to provide your state license number, 
your employer identification number, which is your federal tax ID number. Um, all of these licenses require an odor control plan, which has to be approved by the Denver Department of Public Health and Environment. A social impact plan, um, which is your plan for uh, diversity and inclusion, as well as sustainability and uh, um, your policies for responding to neighborhood complaints and engaging with registered neighborhood organizations. Um, and, and there's a template for the social impact plan linked here and on our website, as well as the odor control plan. Um, if you're going to be providing uh, tools or, or paraphernalia that can be shared for, for consuming marijuana, um, you'll need to provide a health and sanitation plan as well. Um, and then there's a few different items depending on the type of license. So for the marijuana hospitality business license and the retail marijuana hospitality and sales business license, you'll also need to provide an alarm permit number. Um, both of those uh, brick and mortar establishments are required to have an alarm system as well as a contract with an alarm monitoring company. And so you'll be required to provide that alarm permit number. Um, let's see. Then for your retail marijuana hospitality and sales business license, um, you'll also have to provide a Denver city sales tax license number because um, since you'll be making sales, you'll be collecting sales tax. For the mobile hospitality business, you will have to provide some information about the vehicle, um, including the VIN, license plate number, registration, and proof of insurance. And then you'll be required to provide your route logs as well. All right, this is just a reminder that um, the Department of Excise and Licenses cannot give legal or business advice to anybody or make any preliminary findings regarding an application. So as much as we wanna help you get your business up and running, it wouldn't be fair for me or anyone else from the department to give you uh, business advice or, or legal advice. You'll really have to seek out uh, attorneys or business consultants for that sort of advice. Um, we also can't make preliminary findings regarding an application. So um, I can't tell you whether your license is likely to be approved or not. You'll just have to go through the normal application process. Um, it's also the applicant's responsibility to ensure that they comply with all relevant codes, ordinances, rules, and regulations at both the state and local levels. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, which rules you need to read and understand uh, in order to be compliant. And again, just make sure to conduct your own research and engage with professionals if you need to, um, such as attorneys and, and consultants. Okay, um, let's get to some frequently asked questions. What are the fees for marijuana hospitality business licenses? In Denver, the application fee for any kind of marijuana hospitality license is waived for social equity applicants. So if you qualify as a social equity applicant, which you have to, to apply for a marijuana hospitality license, there's no application fee. So the application fee is the fee that you pay only upon the first application. So that's $0. The license fee, which is also paid upon that first application and then is due every year upon renewal is $2,000. So your upfront fee to Denver is $2,000, and then every year thereafter, you pay $2,000. Um, for state fees, you'll need to consult the Marijuana Enforcement Division's fee schedule. Um, I can't calculate your fees for you, but you'll at least know that the, the Denver fee is $2,000, and then you'll just have to consult the fee schedule to determine what your state fees are. Um, where can marijuana hospitality businesses be located? Uh, we have a really helpful resource called the Denver Marijuana Facility Location Guide. Um, it has detailed information about location requirements for all marijuana license types, including hospitality. Um, marijuana hospitality businesses and marijuana hospitality and sales businesses cannot locate in residential zone districts. Uh, there is a zoning map tool that you can use to look up an address and see which zone district it's in. And then all of the residential zone districts 
are listed in the marijuana facility location guide. So it's easy to um, search an address in the zoning map tool, see what zone use district it's in, and then go into the facility location guide and see if that's a residential zone district. If it's not, then it's allowed for a marijuana hospitality business. Um, like we discussed before, the licensed premises of a marijuana hospitality business or a marijuana hospitality and sales business cannot overlap with the licensed premises of a marijuana store. Um, so you, you couldn't have a marijuana store that also has a hospitality lounge inside of it. Um, they have to have separate addresses, separate ingress and egress, uh, no doors through which consumers could pass between them. Um, and then a hospitality and sales business also may not share the same location as a marijuana store. So that's slightly different. Um, location is defined by Denver's code as a structure or building identified by a distinct street address. Um, and to the extent that the structure or building consists of separate units, suites, rooms, or buildings, or other subdivisions, the structure is counted as one location. So just keep that in mind as you're sort of Looking for locations, those are sort of the high level guidelines. Um, there are also proximity restrictions for marijuana hospitality businesses. So both marijuana hospitality businesses and marijuana hospitality and sales businesses cannot locate within a thousand feet of any public or private preschool, elementary school, middle school, junior high school, or high school, any licensed childcare facility, any licensed drug or alcohol treatment facility, any city owned recreation center or pool, and any other marijuana hospitality business of the same type. So what that means is a marijuana hospitality business, the bring your own no sales, cannot locate within a thousand feet of another marijuana hospitality business. And then a marijuana hospitality and sales business cannot locate within a thousand feet of a marijuana hospitality and sales business. Um, so it's highly encouraged that you look in the Denver Mis Marijuana Facility Location Guide for all the information that you would need to um, search for locations. There are also tools in that guide um, and some tips about how to use uh, Google Maps, how to search for things, how to look up uh, licensed child care facilities or drug and alcohol treatment facilities. Um, just lots of good resources to help you in your search. Another resource that we offer is the preliminary non-binding proximity check. So when you find a location that you believe is likely to comply, you've done some research, you've identified that it's not in a prohibited zone district, um, you've, you've done a, a preliminary search around it for any prohibited uses, um, you can send that address to marijuanainfo at denvergov.org. Again, that's marijuanainfo at denvergov.org. Um, with the address, and then you need to tell us what type of license you're looking to put there. And then we can conduct a preliminary non-binding proximity check for you. So we can uh, look at the zone district. We'll look for all of these um, prohibited uses within a thousand feet. Um, we'll look and see if there's any other licenses at that location. And then we'll let you know if it's likely to comply or not likely to comply. Um, again, like I said, we can't make any preliminary findings regarding a location or a, an application. So it really is just exactly what it is. It's preliminary and it's non-binding, but it's just meant to give you a sense of whether the location is likely to comply uh, before you move forward with that application. All right, um, where do I find laws and rules for hospitality businesses? Uh, like I said before, um, it's the applicant's responsibility to understand all of the rules and laws that are uh, applicable to your business type. Um, and it's encouraged that you consult with an attorney to the extent that you need to or consult with a, a business consultant or another expert. Um, as far as Denver, law, Denver laws and rules go, um, the first place to start is really the Denver Marijuana Code. So that's the Denver Revised Municipal Code, Chapter 6, Article 5. And then two sections to pay particular attention to if you're interested in a hospitality business license are Section 6217 and 6218. Um, 
But again, you'll have you need to comply with the entire code as applicable. So it's really worth reading the entire thing. But those two sections are the ones to sort of hone in on if you're interested in this license type. Um, we also have uh, administrative rules governing cannabis storage. This is applicable to hospitality and sales businesses only. Um, hospitality businesses that don't do sales uh, obviously don't have product on site, so they're not uh, subject to those storage rules, but hospitality and sales businesses are. And so those rules have requirements about um, storing product in a vault or a safe overnight. Um, or alternatively uh, complying with some other security requirements. So when you're designing your premises, it's really important that you understand those rules so that you're designing the premises appropriately to accommodate them. Um, it is also a good idea to visit the Department of Public Health and Environment's Cannabis Consumer Protection website. This is just a wealth of information about uh, consumer protection and public health measures for cannabis businesses. Um, also linked here is the Denver Zoning Code and the Denver Building and Fire Code. Um, just for your knowledge, uh, the Denver Zoning Code contains requirements that are um, obviously applicable to your business, but particularly with regard to signage. That's a good, a good place to start if you're thinking about signage for your business. Um, and then the Building and Fire Code just have requirements for um, all types of businesses for life safety. Uh, state laws and rules um, include the Colorado Marijuana Code. So that's the Colorado Revised Statutes, Title 44, Article 10. Um, and the Colorado Revised Statutes are linked there, but you'll have to navigate to Title 44, Article 10. Um, the Colorado Marijuana Rules are the rules that are promulgated by the State Licensing Authority and the Marijuana Enforcement Division. Um, Again, you should read all the rules and be familiar with all the rules that are applicable to your business type, but uh, of particular interest to hospitality businesses is the 6-900 series. Um, that just has a, a whole series of requirements for hospitality businesses in particular. Um, so again, like we talked about, uh, Marijuana businesses are regulated by both the state and the city, as you can see from all of these laws and rules. Um, the stricter rule applies. So the city can be more restrictive, but not less restrictive than the state. So wherever the stricter law is, that's the law that applies. Um, remember that rules carry the weight of law and violations can cost you um, money in, in terms of fines, it could also result in the suspension or revocation of your license. Um, those types of violations could also put you in jeopardy for uh, receiving future licenses in Denver or in other jurisdictions. So it really is very important to understand all the rules and laws and make sure that you're in compliance with them. Um, if you have additional questions, we have a Q&A box open. Um, and we'll get to that shortly. Um, and then if you have questions that you would like to just ask offline, or if you have specific questions to your business that you'd like to discuss, um, just keeping in mind that we can't give you business or legal advice, uh, you can email marijuanainfo at denvergov.org. Um, if you have questions about the state's rules or the state's licensing, licensing process, you can contact the State Marijuana Enforcement Division. And then there's just a few additional resources that are worth checking out. Again, this uh, entire slideshow and the recording will be posted online on our website. Um, specifically, the website is our resources and support for social equity applicants website. Um, so you'll be able to click on all of these links, but it's definitely worth visiting our marijuana social equity webpage, our marijuana information page, um, our laws, rules, and regulations page is particularly helpful just to, um, it's kind of a landing page for all of the laws and rules that you would need to access. Um, and then it's highly recommended that you sign up for our Marijuana Industry Bulletin if you haven't already. Um, 
you probably have because that's how we got the word out about this session. So good for you. Um, and then some state resources. Again, just reading the uh, Marijuana Enforcement Division's regulated marijuana rules. Um, you can visit the Marijuana Enforcement Division's Applications and Forms webpage. That's where you'll find the application for the finding of suitability for your owner license, um, as well as business license applications. Um, you can visit the MED's social equity webpage. They also have some great FAQs about the social equity program. And then of course, signing up for their email list to receive communications and updates. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, I think my colleagues have been answering some questions in the FAQ. So I'll see if there's any that we need to address. Um, okay, there's some good questions in here that I just want to read out loud in case anybody is listening um, and would like to know the answer. Um, can a private home address become a hospitality business in a locked off unit or unit on the property? Um, the answer is no, just because a marijuana hospitality business license can't be issued in a residential zone district. Um, that's a good question. What would the process be if the hospitality and sales business practice wanted to change to just the hospitality license? No more sales, just bring your own. So if you wanted to uh, change from a, a sales license to a non-sales license, um, there's not a process for converting that license. You would just have to surrender the hospitality and sales license to both the state and the city, and then uh, reapply for a hospitality business license. In a retail space, how are maximum amounts calculated? For example, an infused joint with one gram of flour and 0.1 grams of concentrate. That's a good question. Um, the state licensing authority, the Marijuana Enforcement Division has some guidance on their website about how to calculate those, um, the different sales limits with the different types of products. So I would, I would recommend going to the Marijuana Enforcement Division's website and um, uh, consulting that resource. Um, how does the income qualification work if the applicant's income increases due to their business or otherwise? That's a good question. Um, the income qualification uh, is sort of unique in that it can change. Um, so the state is required to look at your um, tax returns from the previous year, and so are we. And so um, the state checks that on your finding of suitability application. So when you, if you were to submit a finding of suitability application in 2021, the state would check your tax return for 2020. Um, then when you come to the city and submit your business license application to us, um, we'll check the previous year's tax returns as well. So if you were to come and submit your business license application to us in 2021, we would also be checking your tax returns for 2020. Um, if you were su to submit a business license application to us in 2022, um, we would check your tax returns for 2021. Um, if you don't have those tax returns available yet, just because you haven't filed yet for that year, um, you'll have to wait until you do have that tax return available for us to look at. Um, if your income increases year to year, uh, you'll just have to, every time you submit a new business application, we'll be checking your uh, income qualification, but you're not required to re-qualify every year for the same business license. So if you um, obtained a store license, let's say, under the income criteria, 
we wouldn't be rechecking that every year upon renewal. That's your store license to keep. Um, it won't be taken away at first if your income increased. Hopefully that answered the question. It's, it's the income criteria is, is the more complicated criteria. So if you can, it's recommended that you try and uh, qualify under the conviction criteria if possible, the marijuana offense arrest or conviction criteria if possible, or the um, place of residence criteria. Are you able to apply for this hospitality business license with the intent of surrender, of surrendering the hospitality and sales license post approval? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. And it looks like Joey might be typing an answer, so we'll see. Um, are there any restrictions on storage of infused edible products? and non-infused food items such as baked goods. Um, so for the hospitality and sales license, um, which would allow you to have storage of marijuana products on site, um, there's no requirement for, I, I think this question is asking if, if you have to keep them separated, um, which would be recommended. Uh, and looks like Reggie's typing the answer as well. Um, but for the hospitality and sales license, there is a, a requirement in Denver that you um, store all products overnight in compliance with the cannabis storage rules. Um, how is occupancy limit for a space decided for a retail space? Um, that's a good question. That's actually a question for uh, the building and fire department. They determine those occupancy limits. Um, how do you determine max occupancy for a stationary hospitality business? Um, again, that'll be part of your, your building permit process. Will this presentation be available online later? Yes, it will. It'll be on our uh, resources and support for social equity applicants website. Um, can a hospitality business be less than a thousand feet from a marijuana retail store? Um, yes, there's no requirement that hospitality businesses be a thousand feet from a marijuana store. Um, they just can't overlap. So the premises can't overlap. And then a hospitality and sales business cannot share a location with a marijuana store. Do all hospitality businesses need to allow consumers to bring their own product or is this optional? So the marijuana hospitality business license allows people to bring their own product, but you can't sell product under that license. So they could only consume the product they brought themselves. The marijuana hospitality and sales license allows you to sell product to them, but you can't allow people to bring marijuana into the premises. So they're sort of opposite business models. And then the mobile hospitality business license is a bring your own model as well. So you can't sell to consumers, but they can bring their own marijuana. Um, Please explain the location and proximity checks. Are they the same or different than retail stores? Um, so we, we went over the location requirements and proximity requirements for 
uh, marijuana hospitality businesses, there are a few differences from retail stores. Um, and that's all in the marijuana facility location guide. And Joey just popped the link into that um, answer. But the main differences between the hospitality and store location requirements um, is that hospitality businesses can't be in a residential zone district, but that's sort of the only zoning restriction for them, whereas stores have a number of other zoning restrictions as well. Um, and then there are not the neighborhoods of undue concentration for hospitality businesses. So stores are not allowed to locate in the top five neighborhoods of undue concentration for stores. There, there's no neighborhoods of undue concentration for hospitality businesses. So that's not a, a requirement for those. Um, and then hospitality businesses have similar proximity restrictions to stores, except that Hospitality businesses also cannot be within a thousand feet of a city owned recreation center or pool. And then hospitality businesses have to be a thousand feet from other hospitality businesses. Hospitality and sales businesses have to be a thousand feet from hospitality and sales businesses. Okay. Um, not seeing any other questions, but we have about three minutes left. So if you have a question, feel free to pop it in the Q&A box. Um, you can also email questions to marijuanainfo at denvergov.org. Um, and you can email marijuanainfo at denvergov.org with um, addresses of potential locations that you're looking at. Um, and request a preliminary non-binding proximity check for that. Okay, how many current licenses are there for hospitality businesses in Denver? Um, so currently there's one licensed hospitality business in Denver. Um, but if I'm understanding the question correctly, or I guess another way to read the question is there's, uh, there's no limit on the number of licenses that are available for hospitality businesses. So there's an unlimited number of hospitality business licenses to be issued. You just have to qualify as a social equity applicant. Okay. I'm not seeing any other questions that haven't been answered. Um, thank you all so much for being here. And please reach out if you have questions. Um, we will post this recording and the presentation on our website here in the next day or two. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>